I talk a lot on this channel about logo design, you know, teaching you how we do things, but I've never really shown you the behind the scenes of a real client project. In this video, we're gonna be showing you how me and the team created Raspadiria's brand identity. Raspadiria sell snow cones in a food truck. They haven't started yet, this is more of a startup project for them. The first thing that we always do is have a meeting. Once emails have been sent back and forth and we come up with a meeting, this is a time for me to just get to know the client. So me and Jim, who's another graphic designer in the office, will get to know the client, ask questions. We wanna understand the goals of their company and what they want from us. Obviously establishing more of a professional relationship with them. We don't wanna just be emailing them and writing and making everything really formal. I don't think that helps creative thought or rapport. So we wanna kind of talk to them like normal human beings. And we also want to understand their scope of work, like what we have to do for them. Now, sometimes the scope of work in these meetings is not just given and directed by the client. Sometimes that we have to offer more or less of our services for brand identity. So out of this meeting, I got the following things from them. They're a food truck business. They sell snow cones that are healthier. They're targeting more of the Hispanic culture, so further down south. And they're using social media as the main marketing tool. Once we've got all the niceties out of the way and we've discussed a bit about them, their projects, their goals, we sort of propose what we will do for them. But pre-written proposals are a bit redundant when it comes to brand identity. And that's where we start our project. The first stage is obviously the brand stage. This is what I call a brand workshop. As brand identity designers, we don't actually just design the logo. We meet with the clients and we discuss their brand and we strategize with them. We workshop ideas. We use a program called Figma to do this. We got this thing called a brand sprint in Fig Jam. Now, the first thing that we want to do with the client is really get to know why their brand is going to be placed, what segments them from the market. Brand is different from just a logo because a brand is all about the feeling, that emotional connection with the customer. So the first thing we do is a brand sprint. And this is a really great way of writing down and sort of whiteboarding where they're going, who they are, and what they stand for. It's really important that a client understands their sort of goals, what they want to get out of their company. So we ask what your business will be doing in the next few years. And these are sort of milestones. So five, 10 and 50 and 20 years. I can't tell you exactly everything because some of it's confidential. The next thing we ask is the what, how and why. This is a huge part of the brand workshop and it's something that any client can do by themselves. We ask what your company will do and we give them a couple of minutes to answer this. How you do it, so what's the secret behind your company and the why, like what's your purpose? What's your mission with this company? If they can answer all these questions easily, that's great, they've done the research and they really have direction in the company. If not, they may just be starting a company that they've never really understood in the first place. They may be just doing it out of impulse, which is absolutely fine. You just need to guide them through this. Luckily for us though, Raspadiria, the clients for this were really good. They knew exactly what they were doing and everyone understood where we were going with this. Everyone had the same feeling at the end of this meeting. Other questions that we ask are, what are your top three audiences? What are your top three values and beliefs? All of these questions really do help us understand and point to a direction for their brand. We ask a bunch of other questions, but I think you get the idea. The drawing stage is really fun. All we're doing is generating ideas. Now, if you want to learn how to generate iconic logo ideas, Skillshare came and filmed us and we did a Skillshare original a couple of years ago. The link is in the description if you want to learn how to do that. But because we're a team, uh, we have me, Jimmy, and this lovely lady called Sam, who was working on this project with us, I set them all off doing different things at first. First of all, we knew what sort of direction we wanted to go in. We knew that it was going to be between the 70s and the 80s or 60s to the 80s. So I got Jimmy and Sam to go off and create illustrations. What we're looking at in this stage is illustrations that point towards that time frame, the time frame of when they were younger, the time frame of Everything's sunny, everything's happy, everyone's really chill, it's all peaceful. So Jimmy and Sam create a bunch of these concepts whilst I work on the logo design. I knew that this logo was gonna be a bit challenging because it's quite long, the name, Raspadiria. 
but I also knew it needed to be in script most likely. So I would go ahead on my iPad and generate a bunch of ideas. I used Procreate to do all of my drawing, makes everything a lot easier. Until I came to a point of where I knew what type style I wanted, it was between the 60s and 70s, and it's just really nice, hippie, Spencerian, brushstroke type. I created this and I edited it within my computer. There was a lot to do. And I gave the sort of concepts to Jimmy and Sam to have a look at, and we all agreed that we're on the same level. We knew where we were going. Now, normally in a logo design project or a brand identity project, we'll have a bunch of different logo directions. In this one, though, we didn't because we already knew what direction this needed to go in in the timing. This project was completely unique to us because the illustrations that Sam and Jimmy were working on were actually what was going to be the most noticeable brand visual for Raspideria. The logo was more of a functional aspect towards them. So Jimmy and Sam spent a lot of time creating a bunch of custom illustrations to use on all of their branding materials. So like the van, the cups, the shirts, the hats. These illustrative patterns were the main brand visual. The logo wasn't, which is kind of backwards sometimes when you think of it. So we ended up liking the logo type, this long Raspideria. The great thing about the script lettering that we did for the logo type is that you can actually condense the typeface down a bit. The only problem then was legibility, but I did some testing, did some kerning changes, changed a few of the letter forms inside there, including the S and the E, just to make it a bit easier to read at a distance. However, we still go ahead and we draw out the logo type in Illustrator with the pen tool because we need to make sure we are precise with every point and where it goes. Then we roughen it up using image trace. Essentially just like make the vector into a normal JPEG and then we trace it back into Illustrator a couple of times and it roughens up the corners a little bit, making it a bit more human. It works really well. The next stage is the concept presentation. This is the time where we take our work and we present it to the client. Now, I will suggest that any designer out there, whether you're a brand identity designer to a normal graphic designer, maybe you're just a logo designer, to always meet with your client, like face to face, whether that's in person or on a call. It becomes a lot more personal and you can also see their reactions and answer any impulse questions that they may have. It really puts your client at ease. If you're doing it on email, they may have time to fester some negative emotions towards you, especially if you're late or if you've done something wrong or if you've gone in the wrong direction. And it also gives you a chance to back up your case. A lot of the time when you're giving artwork or logo design work to a client, you're actually selling it, but not in a manipulative way. You're actually just telling them from your professional opinion, what you think of the work that you've done and what you think of their ideas if they have any. This project was a bit different because there wasn't really any feedback other than yes, you are on the right direction. But at this time, what normally you would do with the client project is you would have a bunch of different directions. And it's that time where you can ask the client what they think and what you think about the work. Your job is to give your professional opinion at that point, but the client is sort of collaborating with you. So the meeting for the concept is always just a directional meeting and that's to further narrow down that road of where you're going. The goal for these meetings is to get everyone to follow the same path because otherwise you'll find yourself in a position where you're actually creating a lot more work for yourself because there may be a bit of a miscommunication as to which direction you're going. Next is creating a better presentation for their brand and this is sort of the final one for us. We created brand guidelines quite literally straight away. <laughs> to show that our concepts work correctly, we use mockups. Envato Elements have amazing mockups and we use them all the time. By the way, this video is sponsored by Envato. We put the logo on hats. We showed how the brand works through the t-shirts. This just further proves to the client that we know what we're doing, we know what we're talking about, and it bridges that gap between fantasy and reality. Envato Elements have over 50 million different assets for you to download, and it's not just mockups, it's fonts, scene generators, music, logo intros, logo animations. Anything creative that you need, like presentation templates, website templates, anything you need is on Envato Elements. And if you click the link in the description, you get 50% off with the annual subscription. But not only that, you get a full week completely free. It's a free trial. Go and check them out by clicking the link down below. So here are our mockups right here. And this goes to show the client how it works. But not only that, we show 
the icons. Now, the interesting thing about Rasperidia is that the icon we created just with the R. It seems to be the easiest and the most effective way of doing this. We did this R with this kind of organic circle around it, and this is gonna be used as a sticker. Jim and Sam created these mock-ups of how it would look on the actual packaging. So for the snow cone, we've got the R. Really noticeable brand visual there with all of the illustrations. These brand guidelines here are actually a really good way of telling the client that you know what you're talking about when it comes to branding. So each of their sort of missions or values that they have are coded here in blue, green, and yellow. Jim did an amazing job with this guideline here. The idea of these brand guidelines is to show them how their brand works and it's sort of presenting it like how it should live, how you should talk about it and how it should look on other pieces of media. Not only with that, we go ahead and bring typography into this as well. It's really important to have fonts and font pairings for them to have. At this point in the client process, we sort of skipped a lot because we didn't have to do the back and forth of different concept presentations. We sort of hit the nail on the head with the direction that they were going in and they did really trust us. But something else we had to do was some social media assets and we did this through Canva. So we created templates. These frames show a part of the brand, not only from the pattern in the background, but also from the organic circle that we've framed the icon in. Here's some other images of how it will look. Really summary, really happy, really clear. With these projects, we're all about showing them as much as possible before they spend any more money on printing. That's why mockups are huge. From there, we essentially have finished and waiting for them to start. Bit of a different video as well. I understand, thank you so much for bearing with me in it. If you'd like to see more, let me know down below. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments. I'm sure I'll be able to answer them. And if you haven't already, please press that red subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. Thank you.